Look at this headline. Gen X on the brink. The stark reality of their grim retirement outlook. This is Forbes. They know money. Apparently Gen Xers don't. Let's find out why right now. Shut up and sit down. Just in case we haven't met before, this is the Retirement Mentality Channel, a place where we want to change your mentality about retirement, about investing. We talk a lot about the fire movement, retiring early, investing in real estate. So if those are things that interest you, you are in the right place, my friend. So let's talk about Gen X today. Gen Xers, also known as the MTV generation, latchkey kids, and the forgotten generation. If you are between the age of 43 and 58, you, my friend, are a Gen Xer. I am right in the middle. I just turned 50 this year. That's why at age 50, I decided I'm. it's okay for me to just go ahead and start wearing the old guy hat. So here it is. Uh, been wearing these uh, for about a year now. We're like the middle kid stuck in between baby boomers and millennials. They sort of suck all the air out of the room. They get all the headlines. Everybody talks about them. And we're just the ones in the middle forgotten that nobody talks about. Nobody ever thinks about us. Uh, we've kind of been on our own ever since our mom strapped on those. Oh, nobody ever thinks about us. We've sort of been on our own ever since our mom strapped those keys around our necks and sent us off to school uh, to return home when everybody was going to be at work and you're going to be all on your own to make your after school snacks and, and fend for yourself. We've kind of been fending for ourselves our whole lives. And, uh, you know, we couldn't have sex because... Uh, the whole world was going to get AIDS and we never really had to plan for the future because nuclear war was always right around the corner. So it just sort of, we, we weren't really big planners, I think. And I think that sort of stuck with a lot of Gen Xers as they've gotten older. As far as retirement goes, you know, we're the first generation that didn't have pensions. You know, our parents' idea of retirement, I talk about this on the channels where sort of where this idea for uh, retirement mentality came about from. You know, my parents' idea of, of retirement was you work for a company for 40 years, 45 years, you get a, uh, you retire, you get a pension and you get your social security and you live off of that. And if you saved any money, you stuck it back in the eighties, you just stuck your savings in a savings account and those savings account earned 10%. So they didn't have to think about investing in 401ks and stocks and ETFs and mutual funds and all those things. You know, they just got the company pension and had a savings account and got social security and that was it. And they didn't have to think about it. And so, you know, since we're the first generation that didn't get those pensions, you know, they kind of told us, oh, you'd be lucky if Social Security will still be around by the time you retire. But they never really told us what we needed to do. You know, people, we had the 401ks and people put money in their 401ks, but most people's 401ks aren't going to be enough for them to retire off of. And nobody really told us how to bridge that gap. I think it was our generation where they started to tell us that you need a million dollars saved up in your retirement account to retire with. And a million dollars just seems impossible. And so it just, that's, it just got put off for tomorrow and next year and I'll wait. And, you know, we never thought we'd be able to get a million dollars. And that's just why I think a lot of Gen Xers never started even chipping away at saving towards that goal. We were running around like feral kids out there, unsupervised, without rules. Whenever they make those movies in the eighties about kids, they never saw parents in the movies because the parents weren't around. We really did get to run around crazy like that. It's why we didn't whine and we didn't complain. And we, we, it's why we notice so much when the millennials are whining and complaining because we didn't whine and complain because nobody was listening to us in the first place. So we just had to figure it out. You know, we figured out how to put our heads down and go to work and get a crappy job so that we could buy a crappy car. We knew what it was like to be broke and we knew what it was to work hard and we knew what it was to work towards what we wanted and get it for yourself because nobody was making our lunches and uh, making our after school snacks. We had to do it ourselves and we learned to be self-sufficient. Okay, so that's where we were. Now let's talk about where we are now and where our retirement savings, what our retirement savings look like. I found this awesome study from the National Institute of Retirement Security and it had a bunch of graphs and charts and I was really dug into it. And it's kind of what I was, was going to go through that 28 page uh, study and talk about where, where Gen Xers are and their retirement savings. But to be honest, I got bored looking at all those charts and graphs and I knew you would be bored too. So what I did was I went through, did some more internet research and I came up with a pretty concise list of statistics that I'm gonna go over with you so you can get the idea without dragging on and on and on. Okay, I've got some uh, notes here with statistics on it. 
So before I go over these, I want to make a distinction real quick about the difference between mean and median. I know you know these terms, but maybe you forget which one is which. Median is the average. That's where you take everybody's retirement savings and then you average them. But I think when you're talking, especially because Gen X is a wide age range from 43 to 58, and some people have $10 million and some people have zero. So the average, I think, skews the number. So I like to look at the mean, which is where you take, if you had 100 people, and you looked at their retirement savings, you take the one out in the middle. So 50% have more and 50% have less. So these are the means. So 50% of Gen Xers have less than $10,000 saved for their retirement. 42% have a big old goose egg. They have nothing. 28% have over $100,000 saved. And a mere 3% have over $1 million saved for their retirement. That $1 million that everybody said you need, only 3% of Gen Xers have achieved that. And when you look at people getting up into their higher 50s, that's a very small number. So this is alarming. So what do you actually need for retirement? See, I think this million dollar number that scares people off uh, is daunting because people are too lazy or just not uh, educated enough or I don't know what the problem is. But you need to know how much you need to know how much you need to save. You need to know what your life is going to cost. I talk a lot on this channel about figuring out what you want your retirement life to look like so that you know how much that costs. And then you can figure out how much you need to save or make or have passive income to pay for that lifestyle. Instead of just saving to some arbitrary number of 500,000, 1 million, 2.5 million, if you don't know what your retirement is going to cost, that, that number just actually means nothing. So I did a little bit of number crunching just to say like the average household income is $75,000. So in retirement, they say you need 80% of the income you would make when you were working because you're hopefully going to spend a little bit less, but you're also not saving for retirement. You've already, you're not working, so you don't have to take that chunk of money and put it into your retirement account. So if the average household income is 75 grand and you need 80% of that, you need 60 grand to maintain your same level of lifestyle in retirement. Okay, so if the average Social Security payment is 32,800, that means you need to make up $27,200 to get to that 60 grand. And in order to do that, you need $680,000 in your retirement account. If you lived off the 4% rule, if you're familiar with that, I'm not going to get into it now. We can talk about it in another video. Uh, but 4%, if you take 4% of 680,000, that's 27,200. You add that to the social security benefit that is average. You get that magic $60,000 to live off of. So 680 grand, that sounds a lot more doable than a million. Still a long, a long cry from, uh, the 28% who have over a hundred thousand saved. So I'm going to talk about the average savings in a minute but i'll just give a spoiler alert it's about 300 grand so that means gen x's are about halfway to where they need to be okay i did one more little number crunching for you sorry if i'm going too fast here uh, but let's say you need let's say you don't think you can live off of 60 grand a year in retirement so you want 100 grand well in order to get 100 grand we'll just work with the same numbers that's the average social security benefits 32,800 is that what it was yeah 32,800 so to get $100,000, you would actually need $1,680,000 in your retirement account. So you needed 680 grand to make 60 grand to get to 100. You need to add a million bucks to that. 1.68 million, 4% of 1,680,000 is uh, 67,200. So you take 67,200, you add it to the 32,800, you get 100 grand. So there's some rough numbers for you to calculate how much you need to pay for a certain amount of lifestyle, but you still got to figure out what lifestyle you want and how much it's going to cost. So like we said before, Gen X has a really wide range from 43 to 58. So somebody with 48 at 48 is obviously going to have less than somebody who is 58, but those people at 58 also have a lot less time to make up for any deficiencies they might have had in their retirement accounts. So here I'm going to show you this graph, which is the average. We talked about the mean and the average before. This graph will show you how much you should have saved by age. This is from Nerd Wallet, And so this is what they say the average people have saved. And this group, the age group, the 45 to 55 or whatever it is, I'll have it here so you can look at it. But they have 
$313,000 saved. So that's about half of the 680 that you need just to add to your social security if it's still gonna be around to get to that $60,000 uh, yearly income. I'm not a big believer in these benchmarks and these one size fits all numbers, but I looked another, <clears throat> but I looked up another one and Fidelity says that at age 30, you should have one times of your annual salary saved. By 40, you should have three times your annual salary in your retirement account. By 50, you should have six times your annual salary. By 60, you should have eight times. And by 67, if you're going to retire at 67, you should have 10 times your annual salary saved in your retirement account. So if you make 100 grand, that's a million bucks. Pretty easy math. I kinda, I'm going to keep coming back to the same point here. But the key, as with all things in life, it's not how much money you have or how much money you save. It's how much money you spend and how much money you need. So back to figuring out how much money you need and what your lifestyle looks like. I think a big key for a lot of people may not be to save more, but to figure out how to live on less and reduce your spending. We get really caught up with keeping up with the Joneses and having the nice car and the bigger house. And if you could downsize the house and downsize the car and downsize the stuff and the clutter and all the things in your life, and you reduce that, you can do it without reducing your quality of life. You can also look at moving to a cheaper area, uh, geo arbitrage. I'm actually considering moving out of this country to a cheaper country. If that's something that you're interested in, I would be happy to do uh, another video. I've got a spreadsheet with what it cost me to live in the US and what it might cost me to live in another country. And I'll go over some of my thoughts on that and show you what the numbers could look like. If you're interested, leave me a comment down below if you want me, if you want to see me do a video about that. But moving somewhere less expensive could be a great way to need less in your retirement account. Figuring out how to live on less is a great way to not have to get to that million dollars if it seems too daunting of a task for you. So don't despair if you're behind. Uh, like if you're a Gen Xer, you have between 10 and 20 years left to, to continue to save, to continue to invest, to figure out how to bridge the gap, to make the money you need to support the lifestyle that you want. Uh, and if you like this video, go watch this video next and learn about some retirement mistakes that you could try to avoid. And give me a big like down there if you like this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.